Hello, Star Wars fans. We are getting ready for the release of Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. Yeah, here, here, it's a big deal. Yeah, it's a sequel to The Force Awakens. Oh, wow. So we are going to rank the Star Wars movies in order. Nobody's ever done this before on the internet, so this is revolutionary stuff. We're the first ones to do it. That's what we do at NerdSoup. We were the first ones to review Game of Thrones. <laughs> Nobody ever heard of it. All right, so let's get right to it. I'm here with uh, the monkey, Aaron Samuel. How are you doing, monkey? Doing great. Eh, this nobody is official, cares. Uh, no, I'm saying this is Let's like, get right into it. Okay. It is obvious that this contest cannot be decided by our knowledge of the Force, but by our skills with a lightsaber. All right, so since we're going from bottom to top, I guess we have to start with Attack of the Clones. Yeah. Not the best. Wasn't a hard decision. No, yeah, that was that was easy. I think one and eight were our easiest choices. Yeah, Attack of the Clones. I mean, I can't get over just how bad the writing was. and uh, The relationship between Anakin and Padme just doesn't work. No, they try to spend so much time on it, and they just butchered Anakin's character. He could have been... They had the perfect opportunity to make one of the best characters in movie history. Everything was there for them. They have Vader, the allure of Vader. They have his struggle between the Jedi and what he wants to do, like his selfish motivations, and they just completely made him into a whiny, unlikable brat. That's the biggest thing about Anakin, is that they didn't make him likable. No. So his turn to the dark side, it doesn't impact us as much as it would have if we came to love Anakin for what he was. And, you know, in the Clone Wars animated series, everybody says that's the real Anakin, that's the Anakin that should have been in this movie. But you're right, it's not that they didn't focus enough on developing the character, it's just the development doesn't work. And this movie, it's a step down from Phantom Menace because the lightsaber duels aren't as good. The Yoda duel with Count Dooku, that's something that fans have been waiting for for decades, and that was great to see. The lightsaber duels, the story, like you said, the moments that they chose to focus on. I mean, you can you can get, make I that mean, work, Anakin. the Padme and Anakin relationship, but dialogue they were talking between each other was so unnatural and cringeworthy, the closer and I the reactions you, the they the were giving each other were toward no one... The thought of not being with you. I can't breathe. I'm haunted by the kiss that you should never have given me. My heart is beating, hoping that that kiss will not become a scar. You are in my very soul, tormenting me. Who acts like that? Who says those things? Yeah. And who pretends that that's normal? The way he was acting, kind of like a predator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very weird. Yeah, it was it was weird. The same problem, one of the problems that Phantom Menace had. Um, they don't focus enough on Count Dooku as a villain. They introduce him, I think we're an hour and, and ten minutes into the movie, and they say, this is your villain. Great Christopher Lee, and he's not really given that much to do. And Palpatine's not in this movie as much, which I also, I mean, he's one of my favorite characters in all of Star Wars. I think that hurts the film. This is the one genuinely bad Star Wars movie. This is the one that I have the hardest time going back to. Yeah, when you sacrifice other things by focusing on one aspect of the Star Wars universe and you do it so poorly, it just, there's no way to come back from that. So The Phantom Menace is probably the most disappointing Star Wars movie. It's the first Star Wars movie after Return of the Jedi, a 16-year hiatus. To me, it's a movie that I would rank out of 10, 5 out of 10. I think there's a lot of good stuff. There's a lot of bad stuff. We can start with the first glaring mark on this movie, which is Jar Jar Binks. He's the first supporting character to be 100% CGI. But just from that character alone, you can tell that this movie was going to be more of a kid's movie, a more 90s sci-fi than a Star Wars movie. Yeah, it didn't really feel like Star Wars. What I loved about the original trilogy and The Force Awakens is the world feels living, it's gritty, it's... I feel like every five minutes they had a button they pushed to have Jar Jar do something ridiculous. And that kind of disrupted the flow of the movie. You never really felt... didn't have that Star Wars feel. And same thing with Anakin, too. Uh, I think he's worse than Jar Jar. It's, it's very close. <laughs> they were competing. As a general review of the movie, it's just... it just felt off. I would rather them get more into character development, see Obi-Wan train under Qui-Gon, and more of the Jedi philosophy than just whatever that was. <laughs> yeah, and they introduce things that 
we've heard about but we never saw on screen. That's one of the reasons why I like going back to the prequels because I like that era. I like seeing the Jedi Order and the Jedi Council, how they operated within the Republic. I like characters like Qui-Gon Jinn. Like you said, I wish he was more developed. The best character in the movie, Darth Maul, who only speaks once, that's another character that I wish they would have focused on more. But I think what this movie did so great was the choreography with the lightsaber battles. The final lightsaber battle between Darth Maul, Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon Jinn. One of the best battles that they've ever done on screen. It ends on a high note. Yeah, and the pod race was also a very... I was just watching it again. I, the way they were able to do that back in 1999, I thought that was pretty entertaining as well. But other than those two big moments, I felt like the movie lacked in areas that they could have helped build up characters, build up the relationship between the Senate and the Jedi Council, and set up the following movies. But eh, what are you going to do? Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember way back when, when you said that this was an unnecessary movie. It's an unnecessary addition to the Star Wars franchise. And I'm going to have to admit, you were right. Yeah, And but I don't like doing that. I know. That must have hurt a lot, huh? Yeah, it does. Yeah, the story is really unnecessary. I mean, they could have solved the, I guess, if you want to call it a plot hole, the plans for the Death Star, they could have solved that in one sentence in the yeah. new movie. But Design flaw. I feel like this movie got a bit of a positive reaction, but now it seems to be more negative. Kind of changed. At first, I liked it a lot more than I do now. I guess that was just a recency bias. When we recorded, it was right after I just saw the movie. And it has an incredible third act. And that act. third act, I think. It ends that, on such a high note. Uh, yes, so I think coming straight from that third act, my opinion is a little bit skewed. But rewatching it, I, it is slow, but it's not a bad movie. No, it's slow, and the thing is, I don't mind a movie being slow. I don't mind a movie focusing on developing their characters. But just because you are developing your characters doesn't mean it's done well. And there's too many characters, there's too many different backstories for them to focus on, for any of them to really get that full development. The best character to me is Cassian, and K2SO is obviously hilarious, but the lead, Jin Erso, we were discussing who was better, Rey or Jin. To me, Jin just never finds her footing in the Star Wars universe, and there's not really much to her character. It felt like she was just there to fix the plot hole. The main takeaway from this movie is I don't mind that it was made, and the idea of a Black Ops undercover faction inside of the Rebellion in the Star Wars universe is fascinating. It kind of plays like a CIA Black Ops movie, and I like that, but I think it could have been executed a lot better uh especially the first two acts yeah maybe they should have focused instead of all these different people coming together maybe they should have already been a group working under Saw Gerrera that could have been more interesting uh there's even the novel Inferno Squad that's the precursor to Battlefront 2 that people are saying now should have been the Rogue One movie that takes place immediately after A New Hope you're telling a story from the perspective of the Empire like you said two years ago it's a movie that really didn't need to be made I, I just don't see why it's necessary uh, cause, uh, they made a hell of a lot of money. That is true. A billy, a billy, a... Mickey needs his cheese, man. Strike me down with all of your hatred, and your journey towards the dark side will be complete. Return of the Jedi is a film that's lucky that it didn't come out in 2017 because if it did, the media would be obsessed with it. They'd be talking about, are there two directors on this movie? Can Richard Marquardt handle the special effects? Is George Lucas really the shadow director? Why couldn't Steven Spielberg direct this movie? Because he was supposed to, but because of the DGA, they didn't allow it. And for me, Return of the Jedi, it was supposed to be that epic conclusion to one of the greatest trilogies of all time. And I think it falls short on wrapping the trilogy up in a way that I thought it should have ended. But I still think it's a good movie. I think it's definitely the worst of the original trilogy. Not saying it's bad, but kind of with you on this one. It's kind—it's of, not a letdown. It just—I think it could have been a lot better, especially when you're closing out these two revolutionary movies. But there's still some great moments in this movie, and you have the space battles and all that. But one of the greatest space battles, probably the greatest, that in Rogue One. Yeah, you know, I think there are some moments where it kind of fell flat. But it's like one of the problems I have with The Force Awakens and this movie, too. I mean, it, it's even more egregious that The Force Awakens did it. But the Death Star again, it's like we rebuilt it 
And they say it in the family guy. You're like, you know what's fucked up about this is that we already did it. I mean, the Ewoks, it's ridiculous <laughs> that these primitive space bears helped take down the Empire. Palpatine, we see all the maneuvering he did in the original, uh, in the prequels. He was this despotic, authoritarian dictator. And a crew, <laughs> and a clan of space bears helped take down the Empire. It's so silly. And Georgia uh, wanted David Lynch to direct this movie. Imagine what the Ewoks would have been if David Lynch directed this. I want to see like, that movie. It would have been like these growling fucking crazy eating them and tearing up yeah these crazy killers but there are a lot of silly things in this movie i think the the first act kind of drags on so i think it's more the most prequel like original trilogy movie of the original trilogy if that makes sense at all it's still good i still enjoy i, I love it as a star wars movie it's just not my favorite obviously yeah it's, it's middle of the road yeah these visions you have they're of pain suffering death yourself you speak of or someone you know someone close to you yes careful you must be when sensing the future Anakin the fear of loss is a path to the dark side I think this is a movie that me and you both enjoy. It still has some of that prequel cringe in it, but this is a movie that has so much going for it to see the transition of Anakin turning into Darth Vader, seeing the purge of the Jedi execute Order 66. Unlimited power. Unlimited power. It's just, it's it's a very dark movie. It's a lot darker than the first two, but I love this movie. This is the one that I get excited to to watch when I go to the prequels. I know, because for us, this is our trilogy. We grew up with this one, and it's clearly the best one. So it's the one we go back to, and when you rewatch it, once you hit three, you're like, all right, here we go. Now we're cooking. Now, now we're watching some fucking Star Wars. It's just so well done. I think they took the criticisms for the first two, and they just they heard what like all the fans are saying, and they adapted and made the right changes. Anakin is a much better character. When he makes the change over to the dark side, you actually are... All right, you're actually a little more invested. It is a little abrupt. It does yes, kind of go yeah, from... That's I'll true. do whatever you say, Master. <laughs> yeah. I think they could have easily... It could have been a smoother transition if they developed it more in the second uh, movie, but I don't want to talk about that fucking... Yeah, but and they also don't have a lot of time. You know, it's a two-hour movie, two hours, 20 minutes. I, it's definitely the best of the prequels. The lightsaber battles, seeing Obi-Wan and Anakin fight on Mustafar, fight on the on the erupting volcano, the Emperor and Yoda. Yeah, so a lot more epicness in this movie. Windu of- and Palpatine. Yeah, there's so many big Grievous moments. and Obi-Wan. Hello there. Ah, oh, Grievous, wicked. Yeah, it's a great lead-up going into 4, 5, and 6 because it adds more weight to the Rebellion, what they're actually trying to fight against, and especially with Palpatine, who Ian McDiarmid playing that character in The Revenge of the Sith is the most screen time that he gets throughout the seven movies. And he's a character that I love, and it's probably, the movie as a whole, the darkest Star Wars movie that they've ever made. And I don't think they would ever go that dark again. Master Skywalker, there are too many of them. What are we going to do? Uh, Are you trying to take my role, kid? He's a better (laughs) actor than me. (laughs) That scene's always like, uh, come on, Anakin. (laughs) He's going to kill a bunch of children. Younglings. Younglings. Come on, Sorry. get it right. I, I said I would I'd love to see a, dark, a Darth Vader movie where he's going around executing Order 66, getting the last of the remaining Jedi. But Yeah, because you're a sick fuck. I think that would just be epic. Why would you want to see that? What are you, dark side? You like the dark side? A little bit in the middle, you know? I'm the prophecy. You're the Bendu? The Aaron Bendu? Do for rot. Okay, let's go to the next one. BB-8, hold on. I'm going low. I think in some weird way this has become the most polarizing of the Star Wars movies. Um, the quote that I love is that nobody hates Star Wars more than Star Wars fans. But I think when the when the movie was announced, it was an impossible juggling act by J.J. Abrams. He had to introduce Star Wars to an entirely new generation, and he also had to keep the core, the hardcore fans, happy. And I think he did a good job of that. Obviously, the biggest flaw of this movie is that it is derivative of the original movie. It follows the same beats, the same plot points. But I think they expanded the universe in a way that I enjoyed, especially the characters. That's the biggest strength of this movie is the new characters, Ray, Finn, BB-8, Kylo Ren, and it's a movie that made me excited about Star Wars again because I always wanted to see them continue with 7, 8, and 9. And now with 7 being a really good movie, it makes me 
hope that eight and nine can be great movies and that I'll look back fonder on this after I see what they do in the future. If you look at most sequels in Hollywood and most Hollywood movies, they all kind of have the same plot. They're all taken from something. You take from past experiences and you adapt to that, but the movie's more about the characters. Kylo Ren battling between the light and dark. Rey trying to find herself with these new powers, and you have new characters such as Finn and Poe Dameron. It's really about them and not necessarily the overarching plot. Yeah, and I think this movie did take a lot of risks. I mean, the decision not to have Luke Skywalker in the movie until the very last scene, that disappointed some fans, but I think that was a ballsy decision. The decision to have really what you can consider co-protagonists, that's what Adam Driver is calling the relationship between Kylo Ren and Rey, where in the first Star Wars movie, Darth Vader's in the movie, we said this, 10, 15 minutes. Kylo Ren, you could say, is the main character of this movie. You can also make the argument for Rey. It's more of Rey's movie, in my opinion. That's a ballsy decision to give the villain that perspective for the audience to follow his path, his struggle. The character of Finn. We've never seen a, a stormtrooper become humanized before. And Finn was such a great addition to the Star Wars universe. He was like plucking a fan and just put, dropping him right in the middle of the galaxy far, far away. It's, it's the characters for this movie. It's the characters. It's the adventure. It's the journey. It's the story of destiny and the coming of age. And that's why I love it. That's interesting what you said about Kylo, too, the co-protagonist thing. Because I think what a lot of people are drawn to is the last showdown between Rey and Kylo. And a lot of people say maybe Rey shouldn't have won that. She's still new. I like to think of it like she shouldn't as far as a storytelling perspective about how yeah. she could adapt. Rewatching it, I think they're going to do that with Kylo. You, you look towards Rey because she's, the, right, she's right. seen as a protagonist and it's, not necessarily the it. villain. But now we have to see how Kylo deals with that and how he adapts and his story going forward. So I didn't like that at first, but now I love it if they take that route in the next movie. I have you not. What? Yeah, You're all clear, kid. Now let's blow this thing and go home. Personally, out of all the movies on this on this list, this is my favorite Star Wars movie, mostly because it's the first movie I ever saw as a kid back in 1997 when they did the re-release. It's just such a wacky, crazy movie for that time period. It feels like the 70s ushering in that new era of the 80s. It's got both of those decades in this film. It's wacky, it's science fiction, it's fantasy, it's got great characters, it's a great adventure, and the effects, everything about the movie, it still holds up today. I think there's something to be said for starting this whole sci-fi as we know it today and to start this whole universe of now we're going on eight movies of just billion dollar movies now. I put it right up there with Empire as well. I think Empire is a little bit better, but practical effects they used back in 77, how it's still able to hold up in 2017 when we have all these CGI movies. I prefer the practical. Probably the most influential movie of all time, for better or worse, the music in this movie. I think the music is so, it's not underrated, but it really is 50% of Star Wars. It's half the music and half the characters, the universe, the effects. But the music is so important, and there's so many iconic scenes, like Luke overlooking the dual sons on Tatooine. And that soundtrack, crafted by John Williams, is just, it's the soundtrack of the future. Well, when you think of Star Wars, you think of either I Am Your Father or the Star Wars theme. <laughs> That's, those are the two things you think of. So the theme is fantastic, and the characters too. Just to start this franchise, that you didn't take in a risk with this new world, these new ideas, and the characters are really what it's all about. The effects are great, but Han Solo, Luke, Leia, even C-3PO having a, anim uh, not animated, a robot supporting character. It's just things that weren't done, but have set the stage for all these new movies coming out, even today. It's great to think that Hollywood is kept making original movies inspired yeah. well, taking a, a risk that's a different video yeah right will you finish what he begins i won't fail you i'm not afraid yeah. you will be you will be I think A New Hope 
can be considered a masterpiece, but for the general movie-going audience, Empire is probably the most beloved out of all the movies. And it's funny because when it came out, critics didn't like it because it was so different. I mean, the first one was so revolutionary. This one came out, it was darker, it kind of has an unconventional ending. It's not a giant space battle. It's the story just stops and we'll continue it in the next one. Yeah, it kind and of reminds me of Batman versus Superman in that way. I was going to say, why are you interrupting me? But then it got even worse as you kept talking. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is the strongest story out of all the Star Wars movies. I mean, the first one, you had a revolutionary practical effects. This one, I think, delves more into the characters, their arcs, their motivations, and it's more of a human story than set in a sci-fi world rather than the sci-fi being the forefront. And I think that's where why it's the strongest one out of the original trilogy. And an introduction to who I consider the best character in Star Wars, Yoda. These are my favorite scenes in all of Star Wars. Expanding the Star Wars mythology, expanding the mythology of the Force, what it means to be a Jedi the differences between the light side and the dark side, and just the fact that another example of Star Wars taking a risk, make a character, and it's just, it's a puppet. They have to build a set that's designed based around this character of Frank Oz in the fucking floor, controlling the puppet with his hand. He talks weird, he's talking backwards, it's just, it's such a risk, and if this character doesn't work, this movie doesn't work. And overall, if Empire Strikes Back isn't the masterpiece that it is, maybe Star Wars is not the worldwide phenomenon we know it as today. Because the first one, okay, you establish this wacky universe but if your second one isn't good who knows if a studio is going to take another risk like this again it doesn't get enough credit for taking the risks and succeeding on not, those risks not only good it's better than a lot of yeah. people would say than the first one how many movies you can say that about you know the sequel's actually better there's only a handful i can think of off the top spider-man of 2 dark knight godfather I, Part all right 2, yeah no no we definitely toy story 2 there are examples but winter soldier usually two towers uh <laughs> Chamber usually of doesn't work all right. Oh, fuck Shrek 2. Harry Potter's trash. Shrek's look amazing. Uh, it happens a lot. Yeah, the introduction of Yoda where you get to learn more about the Force, like you said. And Darth Vader, this is the movie where he comes out to be this iconic figure. Like we said before, I am your father. Yeah, he's only most... in the first movie for 15 minutes. Exactly. And this is the movie where, all right, this is Darth Vader. This is the most iconic villain in movie history. We would be honored if you would join us. <laughs> My two favorite scenes in this movie is when Yoda lifts the X-Wing out of the swamp. And my second favorite scene is when Lando says, I've just made a deal with the Empire to keep the Empire out of Cloud City forever. And Darth Vader is sitting at the dinner table. And Han Solo doesn't even think for a split second, just takes out his blaster and tries to shoot him. Well, he always shoots first. Yeah. I'm surprised George didn't try to, like, digitally edit that, like Vader pulls out a gun. But this is a movie that I could talk about all day. Once again, the music, the sets, introducing the, the opening set, set piece on Hoth, the practical effects like you said the giant fucking 80 80 80s it's just the best star wars movie of all time in discussion as one of the greatest movies of all time regardless of it being in the star wars universe well there you have it the star wars movies ranked in order according to Bo and the monkey the only list that matters on the internet and hopefully the last jedi would come in at number one but this list was done before the last jedi so we'll probably update it for the han solo movie can't wait for that Thank you.